All right, everybody, welcome back to MP2. And we're working on the first test case, which is testing whether or not our server can properly handle posts that add a new place to the map. Um, so what were we doing uh, previously? We were essentially kind of experimenting with posts a little bit. And we got to the point, I'm going to go ahead and, and run this test case again. And I've commented out you know, everything except for this first request that the test uh, suite expects to succeed. One thing I want to point out is that the test cases may look a little different than they did on the last video. That's okay. Uh, we're still improving them and, and, and fiddling with them. Uh, the ones you get will be, of course, perfect. Um, but until then, they, they may bounce around a little bit between the videos. But this is the same concept. We're gonna, the, what we're testing hasn't changed. We're just improving the test suite a little bit as we go. All right. So when I run this, um, what I'm doing right now in my server.kt, I've added this new route. Um, right. Where did it go? Uh, right here, post favorite place. Um, and you'll see that I'm able to print off the body of that post request. And inside that body is JSON uh, that describes a place. So this has all the fields. If I go over to my models.kt file and look at my place, I see it has an ID, a name, a latitude, a longitude, and description. Um, and so does this JSON. So this JSON is the right shape for my place object. And that means that I should be able to deserialize it into a place. So now let's talk a little bit about what we need to do in this method and what should happen in, in certain cases. Uh, so I would suggest that you continue to work on this part of the first test case, just getting a successful request to work properly. And then you go back and start turning on more parts of it and, and dealing with the error cases and stuff like that as you go, right? Um, you know, sometimes that's a good way to develop, kind of like handle the, the um, the working case, the common case, shall we say, and then make sure that your code is robust to various errors that can take place. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's just uh, put together a little bit of an outline in our comments here. Um, so really, the first thing that we're going to do now we have that string that has JSON in it. So we're going to deserialize um, the request body to a place object. And this is where we're going to need to go back and potentially review uh, our deserialization and serialization lessons and look at how and remember how to use Jackson to do this, right? So there is an object mapper that's available uh, right here. Uh, this is already configured and set up properly. So this is something that you should be able to use to take that string and turn it into a Kotlin object with the field set properly based on the contents of the string. Now, it's possible that that might fail because we're going to test a few requests that have nonsense in them, right? Either something that isn't JSON or cases where the JSON shape does not match the place object. So it's possible that the deserialization process may throw an exception. In that case, what you need to do is return what's called a HTTP 400. You're going to return a response that contains the response code 400. That's an error message that's used by the HTTP protocol to indicate to the client that it made what's called a bad request. So what's a bad request? A request is a bad request is one where the server either couldn't understand it or there was something malformed or broken about it, right? Um, so you'll see down here, I'm returning a response that indicates a good request that says, okay. Um, but above, I'm gonna use uh, this HTTP error code 400 uh, in cases where I need to return a bad request, right? And that's essentially the error code that we're going to use for pretty much all of the different problems that we might encounter with the place object. So if deserialization fails, bad request. If there's something wrong with the place, the contents of the place object, which we'll talk about next, bad request. Um, so the next thing I need to do is validate the content of the place object. Um, and so if I go get, again, go back to my models.kt, you'll see that these are all strings. Um, and so what, what can happen here is that it's possible that, you know, that field is missing. And if that field is missing, you'll need to be able to check for that, right? Um, the other thing that can happen is that um, with the, it could be empty, right? So if the description is empty, you need to reject that request. Um, if the name is empty, if the ID is empty, you need to reject those requests. Again, all the same way by returning a response with bad request, HTTP 400. Um, now, a little bit, I'm gonna add a, a take care with latitude and longitude. 
Now, latitude and longitude, you need to check for validity in the same way that we've all we've been doing already. However, there's a little bit of a, of a twist here, right? And here's the problem. If a latitude object, so uh, if we look at our models, uh, latitude and longitude are doubles. If those values are missing, what's going to happen is that Jackson will initialize that field in the place object to zero. What's the problem with zero? Zero is a valid latitude and a valid longitude. So the problem is you need a way to distinguish between a request where my favorite place is actually on the equator, which is legitimate, versus a request where the latitude wasn't set, which is a bad request. Um, so my suggestion is to think about potentially initializing your place differently and making sure that you use a value, this is sometimes called like a, you know, a flag value or something like that. You need to initialize the latitude and longitude to a value that allows you to determine that they have not been set. That value has to be an invalid latitude and longitude, right? So if you use the value zero, you can't distinguish between a valid latitude and a missing latitude. Whereas if you use like a value of negative 1000 or something, that's an invalid latitude. So if it's set to that, you'll know that, that it's not an okay request. So you're just gonna to need to do, apply a little bit of care with how you do that. Um, now, at some point, uh, these are all the places up here where we might need to return a bad request. Um, if we get down here, we have a valid uh, place object and we need to uh, insert it uh, into our list of places. So if we look up here on our server, there is a mutable list of places that's initialized to the places from the CSV when the server starts up. Your job is to take the place object that you have now, now that you know that it's valid, you've checked all the fields and did, done all the validation and insert it into that list. Now there's two cases here. So for the purpose of this route, what we're doing is we're using the ID in the place to identify the person who contributed it. Um, and our app is set up right now to only allow people to, to uh, list one favorite place. So if you get a request where the ID is the same as one that's already in the list, you should replace the one that's in the list. You should remove it and then add the new one. If the ID doesn't match any that are in the list, you should just add it. Um, so, and, and the, the test we test for this. So if I go back and I look at the MB2 test, the first time I call this helper method, I pass it on an ID that I created right here that's a random ID, and that will not be in the list. So this is a new favorite place being submitted uh, by Gracie. Now, if you see the next um, test right here below it, tests uh, moving uh, or changing Gracie's favorite place. So it's in the same spot, but now apparently, you know, her favorite place is Banjo's house, which probably is her favorite place actually. Um, so we're gonna test both. We're gonna test adding and we're gonna test replacing, but both of them come through the same route. If the ID is already in your list, replace it. If it's not, you add it. Um, and so, you know, and this is not, I'm not gonna, you know, claim that this is a, a really a complex piece of code. Uh, I'll say if the ID already exists in the list, replace it otherwise add it so that's the that's the last little bit to do and this is not particularly difficult you've got a place you know how to iterate through places check the id you got to remove stuff from the list you know this is this is sort of basic column program um, okay so this is your task now this is what remains um, and these are all kind of you know completing this requires assembling little bits and pieces of things that we've done in other places um, you know, deserialization, which there's some examples of in the existing code, uh, you know, validating the, the parameters, which is something you've done previously in other contexts, uh, and then some list manipulation. Um, uh, and when you're done, you're going to return this HTTP OK. So once you get to here, you really should always return OK. There's nothing that can go wrong at this point. I have a valid place. All I need to do is manipulate the list properly. Um, so, you know, get that first test case to work. Uh, so my suggestion would be get the first test case to work, then uncomment out a few of these other ones uh, to, to make sure that that's working, um, and then go ahead and uh, go back and start working on some of the corner cases and then some of the error cases. Um, and you'll get it. Uh, you know, this is, you know, at this point, you know, uh, there is some code to write, um, and there is a little subtlety here, but, you know, most of this is fairly straightforward. So good luck.